I'm Andrew, and I'm setting out to make better videos for diesel enthusiasts. Follow along as I review products, do how-tos, and share my personal trucks here on Just Diesels. So today we are gonna be working on the third gen. This is another update on the build for the third gen. I'm trying to do this thing in the right order to basically show you guys the foundation of, of what order you should build a truck in, what things should be prioritized first. And today we're gonna to be doing the steering on this truck. Now, yes, there are way more glamorous things you can do than steering parts. You could lift it, you could do tunes, you can do all kinds of stuff, but steering and front end parts are huge for the drivability of the truck. And I always see those get done last for some reason. People always tune their truck, they do all kinds of stuff, they add 500 horse to it, and then the thing still drives horrible. So today we're gonna to be tackling steering. Now, before we get into this, I have another video on my channel that is all about finding stop and death wobble and problems with your steering basically and how to diagnose those problems. So if your truck has wandering, sloppy steering, death wobble, any of those things, go watch that video because I walk through exactly what you need to do to figure out what's causing those problems because there's no reason to throw every new front end part on your truck unless you feel like it, right? Most of the time it's probably one or two parts that are causing your issue and you want to replace those. So in this video, I'm ignoring that advice. I'm just going to do the whole front end of the truck minus the steering box and the shaft because those are good. But we're gonna be diving into this thing. I'm gonna do this thing right. So let me show you guys what it drives like now, and then we'll take it to CJC, get a whole new front end put on it. So this truck only has 43,000 miles on it right now. So the front end's actually in really good shape. I have very few issues. I have almost no steering play. It's actually probably the best driving third gen that I've ever been in. But why I'm doing all this today is because I am future proofing this truck. So I wanna make sure that once I have 37s on this truck, I have no issues, I have no steering play, I have no wander, and that's pretty much guaranteed if I still have the factory linkage, factory ball, ball joints, all that stuff. If I'm using the truck off-road, those factory ball joints are gonna last five minutes with 37s on them. So today we're gonna be future-proofing. So I just got here to CJC off-road. Let's get this thing under the night. So as it sits, this truck wasn't bad, but I really wanted to lay the foundation for moving forward, right? So I wanted to make sure that whatever I did to this truck, it was ready and set up for it. So I decided to pretty much go with the best of the best. This time around, I'm doing the Mopar 08 Plus steering. That is gonna be the T-style steering linkage that converts this truck from Y-style. If you're confused about T and Y and what they are, here's a picture that kind of explains it, but basically what's going on here is Y-Style is the steering that initially came on these 03 to 07 trucks. The reason it's called Y-Style is because the drag link is one piece and then the tie rod comes off that. And if you don't know what steering lingo is, the drag link is the bar that connects the uh, actual steering box of your truck down to the steering linkage that's connected to the axle. So it's that diagonal bar that goes from there. On the Y-Style steering, what happens is as your suspension cycles, because that drag link is one piece and the uh, tie rod is connected to that, as the front end droops out, what's happening is that you're pulling on that drag link, you're pulling it up, and you're pulling the tie rod ends closer together. So what's happening is you're effectively changing your toe angle. So toe angle is which way your wheels are positioned both in and out. Camber is how they're positioned like this. So with toe, you're towing them in as the truck cycles through its suspension travel, which is not ideal, right? You don't want toe angle to change while you're driving down the road. One, it's gonna cause weird tire wear. Two, it's just gonna cause poor handling. And that's exactly what all these trucks do. So you'll feel a lot of times as you're driving on the road, if you go over like a big expansion or something where the truck fully cycles the suspension, you'll feel the toe change and all of a sudden your steering feels funky. And that's exactly why on these Y style steering trucks. So moving to the T style linkage, which is the 2008 and newer style linkage, because Mopar realized they had an issue, it's gonna definitely clean up the tow and driving characteristics of this truck. Now, if you've been keeping track, my last third gen had the Synergy T-Style HD steering. Again, just another way to convert it from Y-Style to T-Style because the T-Style is going to be the proper way to have the steering set up on these trucks so that you're not getting weird tow changes and weird driving characteristics. Now, I'm probably gonna make a separate video maybe comparing Synergy to Mopar. But on this truck, I ended up deciding to go with Mopar, and that's true OEM Mopar steering. Not the Moog, not any aftermarket company. This is legitimate OEM Mopar stuff in a Mopar box. And I highly suggest you do the same. If you wanna stick with the factory style steering, go with the true Mopar. Do not waste your time on Moog. Do not waste your time on any of those aftermarket brands. 
they literally just don't work. It's pretty much either Synergy or Mopar, or if you wanna go all out, Thurin makes their replacement drag link and tie them with a Heim, but it's a lot more work to, uh, to kind of align the truck, so it depends how crazy you wanna get with it, how much time you're spending off-road versus on-road. I would say that's more of an off-road setup than anything else. So next up on the list, let's talk about steering stabilizers. I talked about this a little bit in another video I did about steering stabilizers, but I'm just gonna say it again. Steering stabilizers are the cherry on top, but they will never fix your death wobble. They're never the key to perfect steering. They're never a secret little ingredient. I feel like for some reason, everyone obsesses about steering stabilizers. So like if people have death wobble, they have vibration, the first thing they do is a stabilizer when they probably just need to replace their track bar, replace tie right ends, whatever else. So just so you know, steering stabilizers will never be the end all be all in steering. They're just a nice little piece. Ideally, your truck should be able to drive just fine with no steering stabilizer at all. And I wanna explain a little bit how steering stabilizers work because it explains why I did what I did. So on my last truck, I did the Fox ATS steering stabilizer. The reason I did that is that it's a neutral damper. So if you think about it, when a steering stabilizer is functioning, it's basically a shock. So there is a piston that is displacing fluid as it moves through that stabilizer. That works fine for a shock, but the issue is that when it's in a steering element, what happens is as you displace that fluid, you're pushing it out of the way, the dynamics and the feel of that stabilizer change throughout its travel. But in a steering stabilizer application, you don't really want that change because you're not necessarily moving through travel, you're just turning left and right. So what that would mean is that the stabilizer behaves differently on a left-hand turn where it's fully extended versus a right-hand turn where it's fully collapsed or vice versa depending on how it's mounted. So the ATS has that pass-through design and the reason for that is it's getting neutral damping, no feedback, there's no fluid displacement as the shaft is moving through the damping element. So that's a cool design there. But I wanted something a little bit more and I won't say that I wanted more damping force, but I wanted was more adjustability and I wanted to preload the drag link. So, a la the Carly high and low mount steering stabilizer. So most of you are probably familiar with dual stabilizers where there's two stabilizers on the tie rod, which is that lower bar that you see. They're basically there just to look pretty. Um, the reason why Carly has their high and low setup is that you can use the stabilizers to preload the joints on both the tie rod and the drag link. And what I mean by preload is apply force to them. So you're probably seen online, but people will take their tie rod or, or drag link and you can rock them around up and down. This is really common on the Synergy steering where you can take it and rock it up and down. That's because the joints aren't preloaded. So if you have a steering stabilizer on the drag link, it's pushing on that drag link and it's not gonna allow that movement. So you're actually preloading the joints. So you can get rid of some steering play by preloading those joints. Even in a perfectly good steering setup, there is gonna be some roll to it. So by preloading that joint, it will have less movement. So the other nice thing about having a dual stabilizer is that as one is extending, one is collapsing. And so you're almost making a neutral stabilizer system like the ATS. So what this Carly high and low does is it basically kind of combines the best of both worlds. You're able to effectively make a neutral damper just like the ATS, but you're also able to preload both the tie rod and the drag link. And then the final piece that no other stabilizer can really say is that you can adjust the nitrogen pressure to make pull or push in the stabilizer. So a stabilizer will naturally want to push in the direction of extension. So for example, on my truck, the high mount will be pushing left and the low mount will be pushing right off the differential guard. If I charged both of those to about 100 PSI, 120 PSI, they'll basically be pushing against each other. But if I, let's say, charge the low one to 80 PSI and the top one to 200 PSI, the truck would push left or pull left on the road. And what you can use that to your advantage basically is to correct for tire pull. So a lot of tires native in the tread design will have a pull one direction or the other. For example, Toyo MT tires are notorious for a really hard right hand pull. And these trucks already kind of pull to the right because solid axles love to follow the crown of the road. So let's say I had Toyo MT tires on this truck, I would probably charge the high mount Carly stabilizer to like 150 and then have the low mount be running at like 100. And that way I'd be able to counteract the pull of those tires with the push of the stabilizer. I wouldn't have to do caster adjustment on the truck. So if your eyes are glazing over, I totally get it. But basically long story short, the Carly high and low stabilizer is essentially just a better mousetrap. It's gonna be pretty much the best stabilizer system on the market. And so one of my big reasons that I switched to the Mopar HD steering was so that I could run this stabilizer system on this truck. The next piece of the puzzle is ball joints. Um, I did actually a full length review on the Carly ball joints on this channel right when I first started. So if you're curious, you can go and give that a watch. But I mean, hands down, these are basically just the nicest ball joints you can get for the Ram truck um, in terms of the materials they're using, in terms of the processes that they use, and they have a lifetime warranty. So literally, if you ever have 
out of spec play in these ball joints, you can send them in, they will send you a brand new set completely free of charge. The only time I've ever seen them get denied is if people install them improperly, which happens. But in terms of the joints themselves, I've never had any issues. All my friends have never had any issues. Um, I mean, these are literally pretty much the most burly ball joints you can possibly put on these trucks. So if you plan to own your truck for a long time, or if you plan to use your truck hard off-road, heavy towing, things like that, you really can't beat a set of ball joints that is this nice. So while there are a lot of other cheaper options in the market, I will say these are hands down the best. Now the final piece of the puzzle to talk about is the track bar. And this is probably the single most important and honestly neglected pieces of the puzzle in terms of steering. The track bar is the only thing that keeps the axle laterally underneath your truck. So if you think about it, when you're driving on the road, um, the control arms are holding your, or the radius arms are holding your axle front to back from moving, right? You know, in line parallel with the truck. But let's say you slam on the brakes and take a sharp right hand corner. The only thing keeping the axle perpendicular under the body of the truck is the track bar. So if you go to make a sharp turn, your axle is gonna be turning, but your body of your truck's gonna to wanna to keep going straight. And the only thing stopping and keeping those two together is your track bar. So it's gonna control the path of suspension, but it's also gonna be really important to steering feel on your truck. If you ever had a situation where you slam on the brakes, turn right, you know, to like merge or something like that, and it feels like the truck's kind of unsettled or, or wandering underneath you, it's your track bar. And then we also have well established that the uh, factory Ram track bar is absolute garbage. It uses a big, large polymer bushing at both ends. They wear out quickly. Already, even from the factory, there's a lot of play just because it's a big polymer surface, soft rubber. Now, like a lot of other brands, Carly is going to be using a FK rod ends heim joint on the axle. They're kind of the gold standard for heim joints, basically. Um, this is going to be a super high quality, um, you know, easily replaceable heim joint on the axle side that's held in by their patented jam it jam nut. Basically, it's just a nice way to tighten it really effectively. The bar itself is 3 8 DOM tubing, so it's gonna be extremely stiff. But what separates Carly from all of the competition is their frame side joint, and this is why I like this track bar. So at the frame side, it's gonna have their encapsulated cub joint. At the center of that joint is a 7 8 FK uniball. It has a small polymer wear surface that is then encapsulated again in a fully welded gusseted structure. Every other track bar on the market is gonna be using a bushing or some variation of a bushing on the frame side of the truck. That is basically asking for trouble, in my opinion. Um, it has been proven time and time again that bushings will fail. Uh, bushings have more play. It's just more polymer wear surface. You think about it, if you have a big rubber bushing, um, you're gonna have movement in it, even if it's in good shape. And then as time goes on, that track bar is gonna wear out. They're gonna have more play in that bushing. So the bigger the wear surface out of polymer, the more trouble you're gonna have. The other thing that's cool and unique about the Carly track bar is that it's a spherical joint on the axle side. So most people don't really think about this, but as your suspension cycles, the track bar actually has to twist this direction. So if you have a bushing that's on that track bar at the top side, that bushing is gonna have to twist and deflect as the bar rotates. So that bushing is doing a lot of work and actually getting a lot of stress because it's being twisted this way and twisted that way. With the Carly spherical joint on the frame side of the truck, that spherical joint is able to rotate completely. So it can't rotate perpendicularly, it can't allow the axle to shift, but what it can do is allow the track bar to roll. That is really key. And it can also allow the track bar to pivot up and down. Again, key. So those are gonna make for more free suspension movement. So you're gonna have softer ride, better overall articulation, suspension movement, and a just better design joint. So yes, the track bar costs more than pretty much anything else in the market, but there's a reason for it. So that pretty much explains why I did every part on this truck. And I don't mean to make this video an ad basically. Uh, I basically just mean to make it explaining why I did the parts that I did. A lot of you guys ask me why I'm using the stuff that I'm doing. Um, you know, if cheaper alternatives work, sure, cheaper stuff does work, but I will say the stuff that I did on this truck, I did for a reason. I've had experience, I've done a bunch of these trucks, I built a bunch of these trucks now. Um, this is kind of the best of the best. This is the stuff that I would want to use so that I have no issues down the road. So without further ado, let's go drive the truck and see how it's doing now. Like I said when I was doing the initial drive on this truck, the steering feel on it isn't bad. It's a 40,000 mile truck, uh, relatively clean, everything uh, is in good shape on the front end. The track bar bushings were a little bit sloppy and I actually was kind of impressed how much of a difference this made. Like I really didn't think putting these parts on was gonna make that much of a difference on a 40,000 mile truck, but uh, I really noticed a dramatic improvement with the track bar. I think that's the one piece, because my steering link, which is actually was in good shape, um, ball joints were in good shape, but the track bar on this truck, even though it looked nice, all the joints were starting to crack and wear, and it really makes a big difference in the drivability of this truck. So like right now I'm driving some Canyon Roads, 
if I had been doing this with the old track bar setup on this truck, there'd be a lot more play, a lot more wandering out of the front end of this truck. And I didn't realize how bad it was until I put this new Carly track bar on here and I go into a corner and the truck just feels like it's on rails. There's no more weird shifting feeling. There's no more kind of vagueness out of the front end. It just feels nice and tight and controlled. And then the two steering stabilizers just really helps. Like right now I'm going over a section where it's pretty rough and uneven. Normally it would be kind of pulling and, and darting the front wheels around, which would then get translated to my steering wheel. With the two high-low steering stabilizers on here, I feel nothing. Literally my truck is just tracking straight. It does not care what I'm driving over. There's a little bit of feedback, but it is so, so minor. In a winding canyon road like this is where you're really gonna notice the difference between quality and not quality steering parts. Uh, this is a road that puts a lot of pressure, a lot of stress right now. I'm going downhill around a really sharp corner. This is like a hairpin 180. Um, and yet the truck is tracking perfect. I don't have any vagueness. I don't have any wandering. I don't have any feelings of weird catching and grabbing. Um, and that's what happens when you put quality steering parts on these trucks. I'm not messing around with this one. I'm trying to do this truck right. I'm trying to do this truck once and enjoy it for the rest of the time that I own it, which hopefully is forever. So I want to make sure that I put parts on that lasted forever and were good stuff. I gotta say, I'm very happy with how this truck is driving, very happy with how this truck is handling. This is exactly what I was hoping for, where it just feels perfect. The ball joints aren't sticking, even straight out of the box. I have literally maybe 100 miles in these ball joints and they just feel perfect out of the box, which is so cool, because normally new ball joints will stick. The steering feel is perfect. Everything in this truck just feels awesome. I literally could not be happier with how this truck is driving right now. I think phase one is officially out of the way, so now I can tackle the more fun stuff, which would be suspension. So that's gonna be probably next. Maybe I'll do power, not sure, trying to decide. But right now, I'm very happy with how this truck is driving. So yeah, as you can see, this thing drives like a whole new truck and it only started with 40,000 miles. So at this point, I can firmly say this is the best driving third gen I have ever been in. Um, I've never had a truck that was this low mileage. Um, I've only been in a few third gens that are this low mileage and then to put all these brand new parts on it, it literally drives better than factory. So I am pumped with how this thing handles and drives. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. Um, I'm happy to be able to share this with you guys and take you through kind of the journey of building this new truck. I want this to be bomb proof. I want this to have the absolute best of the best. And I think I got the steering dialed on this truck and I think that's evidenced by how this thing drives. So I am stoked, ready for the next chapter and hopefully you guys follow along. Subscribe if you wanna see more about this truck and I'll catch you guys on the next video.